gather in this place as friends, brothers, and sisters, united in Christ. Please know that you are loved and welcome here. Um, for our announcements, please refer to the bulletin. And for our uh, youth prayer concerns as well. We will begin this service and all of our services with um, quiet meditation and time for private prayer. So let's do so at this time. God for hearing the prayers of the people. And one special announcement. Today we have Reverend Larry J. He's going to help us with our communion. So you all are in for a special treat today. Let us pray.
a seat this time. <laughs> Very good.
And now it's one of my favorite times, and that's passing of the keys. Um, let us do so safely with the intent to make eye contact with our friends and our family. Change of pace 
are no, normally associated to the feelings that it brings. For example, a few weeks ago, my family and I set out to Wisconsin to seek a change of pace. This change of pace was relaxing, refreshing, and life-giving. A complete opposite to the feelings of frustration around the recent national uptick of the COVID-19 cases. As a result, this rapid change of pace has left many of us feeling lost because we are unable to plan out the remainder of the year. For us parents, we are in limbo because of these uncertainty around the reopening of schools. Many of us are battling on what option to take while also having to work ourselves. Grandparents are wanting to help, but they too have to take their own health into consideration. And also, let us not forget about life in general. Aside from this pandemic, many of us are experiencing all sorts of life changes that alter our normal pace of life. For some of us, our bodies are aging, which results in a change of pace. We're not able to move as quickly or swiftly as we used to. Things like tying the shoe or even getting off the couch aren't as easy as they used to be. A change of pace can sometimes feel as if we're trying to piece together a giant jigsaw puzzle with missing pieces. So how can the Book of Psalms be a guide to navigating or bringing bring together such a sudden change of pace. I believe by reading the book of Psalms, you will start to understand and possibly relate to the various emotions that a change of pace can bring to our lives. In the book of Psalms, you will discover that folks sang, they cried, they praised, and they pray when their pace begin to change. And perhaps by praying these prayers or reciting poems, these words from the Psalms will provide some type of clarity or comfort in our lives. In particular, the Psalms of Lament, which are the prayers for God's deliverance in moments of despair. This, these prayers can be prayed on days when life is just too much to handle. And on days of celebration and praise, we can recite the Psalms of Thanksgiving to praise God for his gracious acts. In times like these, it is so good to know that we have a book that speaks directly to the change of pain. This book of praise gives us words to meditate on and to, to reflect on. The promises that God will never leave or forsake us. So when everything seems to be up in the air, we as believers can seek the Lord for his strength and fearlessly face this new change of pace with the utmost confidence proclaiming that we can give thanks to the Lord, we can always call on his name, sing praises to him, because he is always mindful of his covenant forever. Amen.
into the Synoptic Gospels. The Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples occurred on the Sabbath night of the week-long Jewish Passover celebration. Bread was a staff of life for most people in Jesus' day. John 6, 33 says simply, the bread of God, excuse me, the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Likewise, wine was a common part of the Middle Eastern diets. It had symbolic uses in Jesus' own parable of the vineyards and in his first miracle of the wedding in Cana. For safety reasons during the pandemic, we will use wafers and unfermented juice for the bread and the wine. After Jesus' death and resurrection, many early Christians celebrated a weekly gathering of food and fellowship they called the agape, or love feast. Typically, Old Testament scriptures were read, and stories of Jesus' ministry were recited from memory. At the end of the gathering, they included a brief service they called the breaking of bread, which we now call the Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving. So we as members of Beaver Memorial United Methodist Church have begun to celebrate the Eucharist weekly, and may we too experience the love and the thanksgiving embedded in the Last Supper and the Agape Feast. The history of these important rituals remind us of God's love, Christ's sacrifice, our fellowship together, and our duty to serve the wider world. Shall we pray? God Almighty, with your people over all the earth, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear God, holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who by his suffering, death, and resurrection gave birth to your church and delivered us from the slavery of sin and death. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink of this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith at your table. Amen. And now, friends, with the confidence of children of God, let us lift up the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Shall we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Joining with Christians throughout the centuries, let us partake of this transformative meal where our common life as disciples of Christ creates true communion in our spirits and also in our collective Berea Fellowship. Shall we pray? O God Almighty, pour out your Holy Spirit on us today, and on these the gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. 
by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world. Amen. Will you then take the wafer with me? This then is the body of Christ given for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. This then is the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink this in memory of Christ's death for us and for our forgiveness, his forgiveness of our sins. May God's Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world. May Christ's sacrifice inspire and motivate, motivate each one of us. Amen. Now, this hymn is just a bit trickier than the first one, but it has five verses. So if I mess up a little in the first one, we'll just consider that a practice. Thank you. 
saucepan. Thank you so much for being here today. Can continue to keep the, the ones who aren't able to join us in your prayers. Um, pray for our, our, our family and our friends. Um, I do want to leave you with a joke, if I may, before I wrap up. <laughs> so there were two guys standing at the door at the gates of heaven, okay? You have a white guy and a black guy. And they're arguing, saying, God is black. No, God is white. God is black. No, God is white. So they knock on the door. And she answers and says, Hola, amigos. And they roll the ride. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon the fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. Amen. Amen.